Hello, welcome to this lesson in the AC Circuit Analysis Tutor. Here we're going to switch gears a little bit. We're going to work with Thevenin equivalent circuits and how to calculate them using phasers. So, as you know, what I've been telling you this whole time is the techniques that you've learned for DC analysis, in this case Thevenin equivalence, once you master them, then the technique becomes the same thing in the phasor domain. It's just that instead of real numbers, you have complex numbers running around. So this is a very simple Thevenin equivalent uh, problem. We'll get to more complicated problems later. Um, but to illustrate it, we'll have, we'll have this guy here. We have an AC source, 240 volts, at a phase of zero degrees. And we have three elements here. We have a resistor, we have an inductor, we have a capacitor, and we have the impedances already given for everything, so you don't have to calculate that. And what we're asked to do is find the Thevenin equivalent between terminals A and B. So basically what we want to figure out is, how can we replace this whole entire thing with a single voltage source, the Thevenin equivalent voltage, and a single impedance, the Thevenin equivalent impedance. And uh, then, once you have that, then between terminals A and B, what we have here will behave exactly the same as this Thevenin equivalent that we're going to calculate. So, if you remember back to doing Thevenin equivalents before, there's two steps to it. First, you have to find the Thevenin equivalent voltage, then you have to find the Thevenin equivalent impedance. So, to find the voltage, what you need to do is look between terminals A and B and calculate the open circuit voltage. That means in between A and B, we don't have anything here. This is an open circuit between A and B, but we want to find out what this voltage is between here and here. And this voltage, VAB, is what we're calling the Thevenin equivalent uh, voltage. Now, there's many ways to proceed, but really this is such a simple circuit, you should see that essentially these are all in series with one another, the, all of these impedances. These terminals A and B, they're not connected to anything, so you can kind of pretend they're not there. The current is going to come out of the source and go this way. Now, again, we're in the AC uh, you know, cosine type of problems. We know that the source is really oscillating back and forth. That means the current's going kind of up and down like this, but for the purpose of visualization, we visualize the current coming out of the positive terminal just like DC sources, even though we know that it's really oscillating back and forth. So you can envision the current going around and around like this. There'll be a voltage drop across this, a voltage drop across this, and a voltage drop across this. We want to figure out what this voltage drop is. So the first step there, or the easiest way to do it, is let's figure out what this current is circulating around there. So this current, and I'll go ahead and label it on the circuit, um, this current here, we'll just call it I, it's just the current uh, going around and around like that. Uh, this current I is very simple because this circuit is so simple, it's just Ohm's law, V over Z, this is just Ohm's law. The voltage is given in the problem statement, 240 at an angle of zero degrees, that's the voltage, and the impedance is the total impedance there in this uh, loop here, since the, the guy's just coming back and circulating like this, so it's going to be this impedance plus this impedance plus this impedance would give you the total impedance that we need to use there. So just adding them up, we'll have J60 plus 36, this is a real number because of this, minus J48. All right. So at the end of the day, on the top you'll have 240 at an angle of zero degrees, and on the bottom the real number is 36, and the imaginaries add together. So what you'll have is plus J12, because the 60 minus 48 will give you plus J12. Now, Again, you can do all of this manually. You would convert this to algebraic or convert this to polar, and then you would do the division. Um, but, you know, use your calculator. Stick the top thing in as a polar number, stick the bottom number in as a rectangular number, then you don't have any uh, risk of screwing up in all of the steps that you need to, do to deal with these complex numbers. Do the division, and then ultimately, I, the current that's circulating around there, when you do this, uh, is 6 minus J2 amps. Now, I wrote it in terms of um, uh, algebraic rectangular notation. I could have written it as a polar number. I, I, you need to kind of get used to seeing that. So I'm, as we work through the problems here, sometimes I'm going to write currents as, as a polar representation, magnitude, and phase. Sometimes I'll write, write them in rectangular, uh, what we call rectangular, real plus imaginary. But it's the same thing. They're both phasers. I mean, I can convert this to polar notation if I wanted to. Sometimes I'll write it one way and sometimes I'll write it the other way. You just need to get used to seeing it both ways. Once you understand how to do your calculator, you'll be able to switch back and forth no whatever notation that you want. For now, I'm going to leave it like this. So this current, 6 minus J2 amps, is the current that's essentially circulating around like that. Now, how do we find this open circuit voltage? This open circuit voltage is going to be VAB, right, which is going to be the current flowing 
times the impedance, right? Just Ohm's law, essentially. The current that's flowing is 6 minus J2, and the impedance is the impedance right here, because this is the voltage drop I want, which is just a real, whoops, not 63. It's a real number, because it's a resistor, it's just 36. All right, so when you stick this in your calculator, ultimately you'll be multiplying this times this, and then this times this. It's just an algebraic type of thing. What you'll get for VAB is going to be 216 minus J72. You get that from your calculator, but you know 36 times 6 gives you this, and 36 times 2 gives you this. The negative just comes there. So this guy, it's not the complete answer, okay? But I'm going to put a star by it because it's, it's half the answer, really. VAB is what we call V Thevenin, the Thevenin voltage, because it's the open circuit voltage across terminals AB. So really, we've solved half the problem. And we've done it by just looking at terminals A and B using the rules of circuit analysis with phasers to figure out what this voltage is. Now, when the problem's more complicated, it's not going to be so easy to do this. But I'm starting small, you know, to give you some practice with the technique. All right, so then we have the next part of this guy. In order to get the Thevenin equivalent, we need the voltage here, the open circuit voltage, and we also want to know what the Thevenin equivalent impedance is. And there's actually three different ways to get that, and it kind of depends on the problem that you have as to which path you choose. Um, I'm going to actually work two different ways of getting the Thevenin impedance for this simple problem. And the other way will actually use in some other problems down the road, because it really depends on the problem you have. It, since all of the sources in this problem, in this case just, just one, and it's just an uh, independent uh, source, then what I can do is kind of look back through terminals A and B, look into the network in this direction, and I can replace all of the voltage sources with short circuits, and I can replace all of the current sources by open circuits, and then I can just find that impedance looking back. So in this case, I, I kind of put a short circuit through all of the voltage sources, and then I look back and just calculate the impedance that I see. And I know how to do that from parallel series arrangements. All right? And I can do that because the only source I have is an independent source. If you have dependent current sources or dependent voltage sources, then that's not going to work. You can't replace the dependent sources like that. You can replace all of the independent sources with short circuits or open circuits. Okay? Now the third way you do it, to find the Thevenin equivalent uh, impedance is you can put a test source out here. Like I could put a voltage source out here with one volt, right? And I know that this voltage source is one volt and then I can shoot current into the circuit. I can replace all of the sources as needed over here. I can calculate the current that comes out of this guy and then I can use Ohm's law to figure out what the impedance must be looking backwards. That type of situation we use a lot more frequently when we have dependent current sources. So when you have like a diamond here with some dependent current source or dependent voltage source, you can't short circuit it. So you put a test source out here, shoot current into it, see how the circuit responds, see what kind of current comes out of it, and then you can calculate the impedance. So Thevenin impedance, three ways. First way, find the short circuit current through here, then calculate Thevenin impedance. Second way, short circuit or open circuit the dependent the independent sources and then just calculate looking backwards what the impedance is using parallel series uh, simplification. The third way is put a test source here, inject a voltage or current, and then calculate how the circuit responds to find the impedance here. The last one we do for more complicated types of problem. So the, the first method that we're going to do, I'm going to label it method, method one is going to be the easiest. What we're going to do is we're going to put a short circuit everywhere we see a voltage source, an independent voltage, so or voltage source. If we had a current source here, we would put an open circuit wherever we saw an independent uh, current source. But in this case, we only have one source. We put a short circuit here. The problem remains exactly the same, and we look backwards and try to figure out what this impedance is. So if I put a short circuit there, I just put a line here. This inductor stays the same, this resistor stays the same, this capacitor stays the same. So everything stays the same. All I really did was put a short circuit where the source is. This is J60, this is 36 ohms, and this is negative J48 ohms. Um, but everything stays the same, and ultimately what I'm trying to do is find out um, between terminals A and B, you know, you kind of look backwards this direction and you find ZAB. So you kind of have to pretend that you're standing over here because it does matter and you have goggles on and you're looking this direction. What does the impedance look like this direction? Well, this is a short circuit. I have an impedance here and an impedance here. These are in series on this kind of side over here. So I can add these guys together to simplify that branch. 
So when I add them together, um, what I'm going to get is it's going to look like an inductance. You'll see why in a second. I'll kind of make this a resistor here. Up here, if I haven't made it clear, this is actually J60 ohms. That just comes from the problem there. I, I don't think I made that clear. This is J60 ohms. So down here, what we have is we have an inductance in series with this capacitor here. We add them together. J60 minus J or plus a negative J48 is going to give you a positive J12 ohms here. That's why I wrote this symbol as an inductance because I have a positive imaginary and so I can write it as it looks inductive. And that's because the inductive component is bigger than the capacitive component there. And then this guy stays the same, 36 ohms. And don't forget terminals A and B are right here. And I'm looking backwards in this direction. So how would I calculate the impedance looking in here? I just have these two guys in parallel with each other and I know how to calculate parallel impedances. So I'll say Z, A, B is equal to product of these two impedances over their sum. So it'd be 36 times J12. That's the product of these impedances over their sum. So 36 plus J12, right? So at the end of the day, basically what you do in your calculator, you multiply these numbers together, this real number and this imaginary number, and then you divide by this complex number, and then you will get 3.6 plus J 10.8 ohms. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and circle that and put a little star by it because this is really the other half of the problem. This is the, the ZAB is the Thevenin uh, impedance looking this way. So we can call it Z Thevenin is another way of writing that. And notice that the real part is 3.6 ohms and the imaginary part is positive. So it looks like an inductor and it's 10.8 ohms in, in terms of the inductance, J 10.8. So if I wanted to redraw this, and if I wanted to circle an answer, which you always do, your Thevenin equivalent looking from terminals A and B is going to look like this. You're going to have a voltage source, and you're going to have a resistor, and it's going to look like an inductance because of the signs of everything. And then here, you're going to have terminal A and terminal B. Now, the source is going to look like 216 minus J72, and that's going to be volts. Now I could write this in polar form, that's fine, I could convert it, but I'm just leaving it algebraic. This is the value there. This is 3.6 ohms and this is J10.8 ohms. So what we basically said is this source here um, with this resistance and this inductance looks exactly like this system here from the point of view of terminals A and B. So that means if I literally put this thing in a cardboard box and I couldn't see anything inside of this box, all I could see was terminal A and B sticking out of the box. Then everything I can measure across terminal A and B, no matter what I connected, what, if I put a motor on it, if I put a resistor on it, if I put a light bulb on it, if I put an oscilloscope on it, whatever I did to it, it would look exactly the same as if I put this in a box with terminals A and B just sticking out of the cardboard and I measured everything I could there. So from the point of view of terminals A and B, inside of the box, these are both equivalent things. That's the power of this Thevenin uh, equivalent technique. And the way we did it was we go back and we look at all the independent sources. If they're voltage sources, we short circuit them. If they're current sources, we open circuit them. And then we look backwards and we start simplifying the circuit, getting uh, and doing these parallel series arrangements, whatever we can do to get it down to where we have a single impedance. And that's our, what we call our Thevenin impedance. So that's method number one. Notice I label it uh, method number one. And now I want to do the exact same calculation to find Thevenin impedance using a different method because I want to give you practice. Because, you know, this is a simple problem. So I can't do this with every problem because sometimes problems are three boards long and it would take too long. But for a simple problem like this, I can illustrate different techniques easily and you guys can understand that. So for the second method, what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate, I'm going to short circuit A and B, right? And I'm literally going to connect a wire from A to B, and there will be a current flowing through here. Notice it's coming out of here. It'll go through the short circuit. I need to find out what that short circuit current is. Once I know the short circuit current, I can use Ohm's law to find the Thevenin impedance. So what I'm going to do is redraw the circuit with a short circuit here uh, between A and B to illustrate that. I know I'm doing a lot of redrawing, but it makes it clear. So here I have my voltage source. Here I have my inductor. Here I have my resistor. Here I have my capacitor. Okay, and then here is terminal A, and here is terminal B, and then I've connected a short circuit. So I'm gonna kind of fill these guys in uh, there. So here, 
the source is the same. It's 240 at an angle of zero degrees. Notice that everything is intact from the original problem statement. I'm doing a completely different method. This is J60 ohms. This is negative J48 ohms. And this is 36 ohms. And what I really want to find in terms of the Thevenin problem here, notice I consider the current going up and then the short circuit current is most likely going to be coming down here. So you label it ISC, short circuit. Again, we know that the voltage is oscillating back and forth because it's AC, and we know the short circuit current is really going up and down, but we write the reference directions um, as if they're DC just to kind of keep it straight, okay? Because that's kind of the reference polarity of everything. So that's the short circuit current. So let's calculate what this short circuit current is here. So what's going to happen is the current's going to come out through here, it's going to go through this inductor, and it's going to hit this junction. What do you think is going to happen when current gets here? Is any current going to go through this resistor? The answer is no. All of this current is going to just bypass this resistor and go here because this is a zero resistance path. There is literally no resistance at all. No electron is going to go through a 36 um, ohm impedance or 36 ohm resistance when it has the opportunity to go through free resistance, totally free. So really, when you draw the short circuit here, you kind of can kind of cover up and just pretend this thing isn't even here. This thing isn't even here at all because all of the current is just going to essentially bypass it. Now I drew it like this so that you could see that I wasn't you know, playing games with you and I drew the original circuit, but functionally it's going to just totally bypass the 36 ohm resistance. So calculating the short circuit current is very simple in this case because the short circuit current is going to be Ohm's law, V over Z, and the voltage that's driving it is 240 at an angle of zero degrees, and the impedance is going to be J60 minus J48 because I'm summing up these two impedances as the total impedance in this loop. I'm ignoring this one because I know from, this is why electrical engineers get paid money because they have experience and intuition. You know that this, impedance, that this resistance isn't going to do anything. So you just mentally toss it out. The denominator here, the impedance that you calculate is the impedance along the, the current path. And since you know no current's flowing here, you just ignore it. So that's what you have here. Um, so just to make it painfully obvious, 240 at an angle of zero, and in, in the bottom you have J12, because that's just 60 minus 48, J12. So when you do this calculation, the short circuit current is going to be if you, in polar notation, depending on what your calculator gives you, 20 at an angle of negative 90 degrees, that's in amps, or in rectangular, it'll just be negative J20 amps. These are basically the same, so I'll just say, put a big or here. If you put it in polar notation, it'll look like this. If you put it in rectangular notation, or in uh, imaginary notation, it'll be like this. So we've calculated how much current is flowing through the short circuit leg between A and B. Now if you remember back to when we learn Thevenin equivalence the first time, once you find the short circuit um, current, then you find the impedance again by Ohm's law. So the next step here, once we have the short circuit current, is to calculate uh, the Thevenin equivalent resistance, which is the resistance looking back from terminals A and B. But in this case, the way we do it is we use a version of Ohm's law. Z is equal to V over I. So we know that between terminal, forget about the rest of the circuit, between terminals A and B, we know how much current is flowing. Now also, we've already calculated the Thevenin voltage. We've already calculated that. The Thevenin voltage is this number here, 216 minus J72. That means that between terminals A and B, we already know what the voltage is. So between, if you completely ignore the rest of the circuit, we know the voltage between terminals A and B, and we know the current between terminals A and B. Therefore, what must the resistance looking back through terminals A and B B is going to be the voltage across those terminals divided by the current passing through those two terminals. So the voltage is given by the other board, 216 minus J72. The current is given as negative J20. That's just the current, the short circuit current given right here. You dump those guys in your calculator, and what you'll get for Z Thevenin, and when you get it in rectangular form, 3.6 plus J10.8. Uh, ohms. And we'll put a check mark there because this is exactly what we calculated before. 3.6 ohms plus J10.8 ohm, uh, ohms, which is, looks like an inductance because it's positive. So I wanted to do two different methods of calculating Thevenin resistance. The first case, we short circuit the voltage source and we just calculate through series parallel arrangements the value of the impedance that must be through there. 
The second method is we calculate the short circuit current. We already know the Thevenin voltage here, so we divide the two to get the Thevenin impedance. The third way we actually use more when there's dependent sources, and that is we take away the short circuit, we put a test source here, we inject some current in there and, and find out since we know how much voltage we're putting as the test source, we know how much current we're pushing into the circuit, we can divide those, those two numbers and get the uh, Thevenin impedance. We'll do that for a more complicated problem later on. So make sure you solve this yourself. Grab a piece of paper, write it down. Simple problems like this can sometimes be the best because they're simple enough that you know what to do. You're just honing your skills and making sure you don't make silly mistakes along the way. Then as we get into more complicated problems, you'll have that confidence to know that you're doing it right procedurally. Uh, and so that's what you need to really focus on. So follow me on to the next lesson. We'll calculate another Thevenin equivalent, slightly more complicated circuit, just to get some practice.